Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Play On Podcast. In this episode, we're giving our preview for who we think is going to win the All-Ireland Championship. So if you weren't with us for our preview of the Provincial Championships, we picked Dublin to win the Leinster Championship, we picked Kerry to win the Munster Championship, Mayo to win the Connacht Championship and Donegal to win the Ulster Championship, which would leave these four superweights in the GAA in the last four against each other. And who do you think would win from here, Luke? Yeah, I, I think, look, it's, I do think it's, well, obviously this, the, the six time winners in a row have to be the one that uh, springs straight to mind. They look equally as good again this year. It's still a smooth oiled machine with no kind of glaring weaknesses. So you'd have to look at Dublin and I would go with Kerry as the next contenders. And yeah, I think I think Mayo might struggle a little bit this year with kind of when we get to this stage due to the absence of Killian O'Connor, like their main man and captain, everything like this is, that's going to be an absolute huge loss for them. So yeah, and then Donegal as well. You kind of saw Donegal will need Michael Murphy fit and fire at his absolute peak kind of to... Uh, to kind of hope to stay in the game with Dublin, but you, like you can't really uh, imagine them being able to uh, to put it up to them just yet, anyway. So yeah, I think Dublin with maybe Kerry as the potential uh, biggest kind of challengers to the to the crown this year. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that like Kerry definitely are the biggest upsets, and they're going to get in my mind to play them in the All Ireland final because it's the winners of the Connacht Championship against the winners of Leinster. And then on the other side is the winners of Munster against the winners of Ulster. And of course, we've picked Dublin, you know, as the winners. They'll probably play against Mayo, we predicted, and Kerry will play against Donegal, which sets up, you know, the Dublin Kerry final. And haven't seen, you know, how good Dublin were in the, you know, in the last six years, obviously winning all them games. Kerry are the last team in the championship who actually threatened to beat Dublin in that first game. In the All Ireland final, they should have beaten them following Killian Spillane's, you know, point to put them ahead with a couple of minutes left to play. And yeah, I think Kerry, the way that they go into it will be very interesting. Obviously, if Donegal have Michael Murphy back, you know, they'll be a different team. But on the other side, I think that uh, Killian O'Connor less Mayo will, you know, fall short to Dublin quite comfortably, to be honest. I think. Yeah, I think I think so. I think it'll just be a bit bit too much of a, of a bridge too far at that stage for Mayo. I would expect Dublin to get into the final. But yeah, I think you see what happens when Dublin gets to the final. These games tend to be kind of tight when they come up against the Super Paris. So yeah, I'd, I'd, that kind of prospect would be absolutely mouth-watering. And on any given day, you never know what happens on an all iron final, early red card, early injury, stuff like that. The game can swing very easily. So yeah, it's it's an exciting kind of prospect ahead in the year if our predictions... Uh, Turn out they could be uh they could be toward in week one like we saw last week year as well when uh, Kerry lost the cork so yeah, yeah definitely exciting. and uh, it's a very good point you made as well there about the unknowns of Gaelic football like what happens if you know Dublin play against Wicklow in the first round of Leinster and Brian Fenton gets an injury or Kieran Kilkenny gets an injury and then you know that's one of Dublin's key players gone because that's something that has gone on notice, to be honest, about Dublin, is that Brian Fenton, Kieran Kilkenny, Conor Callaghan, they're always fit. They're never really injured. So that aspect of Dublin's game has never really been threatened. It's usually the same key players are always fit for them. And, you know, coming into the last four, if they had an injury to one of their big players, you wonder could Mayo catch them. And if Mayo couldn't, you wonder if a Kerry or a Donegal could catch them in the final. I do think that it's destined to be Dublin against Kerry in the All-Ireland final this year. I do think that, you know, Kerry are destined, in my opinion, as the team that will eventually knock Dublin off their perch as the All-Ireland champions. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the year that they do it. But it's so hard to bet against Dublin. They've been consistently brilliant. And obviously a crowd would be back at the All-Ireland final this year, which would make it electric. Dublin, of course, would be going for seven in a row of All-Ireland titles. And Kerry would be so desperate to put an end to that, having failed to stop the five in a row in 2019. I'm almost edging towards picking Kerry because there's an, there's a hint of destiny about it. There's a hint of fate that, you know, Kerry are the team that get to end this run. Yep, I, I can see, I can certainly see your see your uh, perspective on it, and that kind of like we we all know that this can't go on forever, and that 
Dublin, they will be beaten eventually in a championship game. But it's just so hard to bet against them, kind of like that. And I know it's a great point you make about that we we do we've seen Dublin kind of adapt to losing fellas like Jack McCaffrey and Paul Mannion and stuff like that. But they've have never had to in a championship plan without a Kieran Kilkenny and a Brian Fenton. And I think the two of them are the absolute irreplaceable players in that team. And that if Dublin were to lose Kilkenny, it would be really, really interesting to see if they could cope against the top teams. I think something like this situation might soon well happen. And yeah, I think you made a really good point that this this like this perspective is something that hasn't really been hugely discussed, but eventually something like this will event will eventually hit Dublin and then I think they will be caught out. It's just a question of when it's gonna happen. And I, I still think that they have the strongest squad to go uh to go and defend their uh their title for what would be the seven year in a row. Yeah, I understand completely what you're saying, but I've kind of given into the temptation. I'm going to pick Kerry to win this All Ireland. I think that Kerry, their time has come. I think that the David Clifford now has fully grown in. I think with his brother Paddy and the team as well, they seem to have filled out their forward line and the way that they've been blasting teams away in Division One, like putting six goals past Tyrone, and putting four goals past Galway. Dublin haven't really done that to anybody, and. There are some cracks there. As you said, the likes of Paul Mannion isn't there. Jack McCaffrey isn't there. Kerry are full strength. And yeah, it's so hard to call, especially now, because, you know, obviously there is the unknowns. David Clifford could get an injury as well on the Kerry side and Sean O'Shea could get an injury. Like, it's so hard to, to call it now. But there's something telling me that Kerry are going to win the all Ireland this year and I can't shake it so yeah I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Kerry to win as hard as it is but I would not be the slightest bit surprised if obviously Dublin do a Dublin and win the all Ireland again Yep I think it'll be certainly interesting anyway and uh, yeah it's, it's, it's a really interesting prospect ahead of us in this uh, the next few weeks it's going to come ticking fast now so yeah time to see it Yeah and uh so we're going to move on from who we think is the all Ireland Championship to the individual awards. And I'm going to start by asking you, who do you think are some shouts for a potential player of the years? Yeah, I'm going to go with, I think the, the man that should have won it last year. I thought Kieran Kilkenny should have won it last year. I can't believe he hasn't won one yet. I think he's probably, I think he's the most important player in that double team. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go with him to finally get over the line and, uh, yeah, be the man to win it. Obviously, as well, David Clifford still hasn't got his first one yet. And if he gets to an All-Iron final, you'd assume his form will have to be really good. He could be a great shout as well. But yeah, I think he'll cook any. I think they're brilliant shouts, both that you mentioned there. I think that Dublin and Kerry are going to get to the final. I think if Dublin win the All-Iron, I think Kieran Kilkenny wins the Player of the Year. And I think if Kerry win the All-Iron, David Clifford wins the Player of the Year. That's honestly how I see it. Apart from that, you know, outside shots, you could say, I mean, if Donegal or Tyrone get, you know, have a good championship, they're key players that you could look at, you know, Michael Murphy or Paddy McBrady that have been, you know, shooting the lights out of Galway, you know, managed to beat Mayo and get to the All-Ireland semi-final and put it up to Dublin. Shane Walsh will no doubt have a huge part to play in them doing so well. I think another good shout is Sean O'Shea from Kerry. Obviously, he's never won the player of the year and he's a massive player for Kerry. But I think most of the attention is on David Clifford and Kerry. And yeah, so I think it's between Kieran Kilkenny and David Clifford for me. I think one of them is going to win it. Yep, absolutely. I think uh, I think they're probably two safe bets as well. Yeah, two fellas that would definitely be in contention anyway. What about Conal Callan? Yeah, Conal Callan, definitely, he's definitely up there as well. And uh, you saw how important he's got as well. I just feel like I can't believe Kilkenny's never won one before. And uh when looking at this Dublin team, kind of everything goes through. Him. And I just think, yeah, I, I, you know what you're going to get from Kilkenny every single time. He's here, he's a good man for three or four points in every single game. And yeah, I just think that eventually he will be, uh, he's got to get the ultimate acknowledgement for those kind of consistent performances. Yeah, definitely. I have one more shout that I think is a, a good shout because I think if Kerry are going to win the All Ireland against Dublin, I think it, it requires a massive performance from David Moore in midfield. I think that if Kerry managed to win the All Ireland, say if David Moore and hypothetically shuts Brian Fenton down in that All Ireland final and dominates the midfield, he could be right up there to win the award as well. Yeah, I think it's a good. I think it's a good call. I think. Uh, I think absolutely in that, like you, you could certainly see that. And there, 
yeah, but I, I just think that uh, if there were to be a year when Kerry win in All Ireland, it would be hard to imagine that they would ignore kind of the the poster boy kind of for this entire team and that the the kind of the real leader of this team, which would be Clifford. And I do think that assuming he stays fit and performs well, that if Kerry were to win in All Ireland, that will be the year that Clifford wins the Player of the Year. Yeah, I'd find it hard to not agree with that. Moving on from the player of the year, who do you think the young player of the year will be for this year? I have a couple of names here that are some good shouts. I think the first one that I'd like to say is Tommy Conroy from Mayo. I think he's you know really starting to blossom. He looked really good in the first league game of the season for Mayo. He looked like he was really hungry. He scored a fantastic goal against Down in that game. And another good shout is, of course, Oshin Gallen from Donegal. Came off the bench last year to kick an amazing point against Tyrone, which kind of saw Donegal over the line in that game. Who do you think could win this award? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I like the kind of the, the thoughts of Gallen kind of as young player of the year. I do I expect him to kind of get an awful lot of game time this year. I think this year he might fully announce himself as the starter in that team. And yeah, I think I think Gallen's a great shout. So yeah, I. You can kind of look kind of there's there's a few players that are breaking through in teams that probably won't be expected to go as far kind of in uh, the all Ireland. You look at Jordan Morris for Mead and stuff as well. Looks a great prospect, but uh, yeah, I think if you're if we're basing off the teams that are expected to go further in the year and lads that are going to get a decent bit of game time, I think yeah, I think Tommy Conroy and Ocean Gallen are probably the two favourites for uh, for the award if there was a picture like if if you were to estimate what it might be now. Yeah, I think another really good show for a young footballer of the year is uh, if Galway were to go far, I think Matthew Tierney would have a huge impact on their championship. And I think if he, if Galway were to go far this championship, I think Matthew Tierney would have a big say because Porrick Joyce is certainly, you know, putting a bit of faith into the young players in the team. You look at the, like, the likes of Jack Lynn starting, Tom O'Callaghan's getting game time, and Matthew Tierney, um, a lot of faith is being put in him by Porrick Joyce. And I think if Galway are to win the Connacht Championship, I think Tierney will have a big impact on that. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I think there are some great calls. And there, fellas, all three of the names you mentioned there for Galway will be expecting game time this year. And yep, so they'd all have a great chance too. I think there, yeah. before we move on from that award, though, I think the biggest, obviously, show is the winner last year, Oshin Mullen. Unbelievably, is still only 21 years of age. He won the Young Footballer of the Year award last year. He looked even better this year than he did last year. It's very rare that a player would win it back to back, but I think if he has another outstanding campaign for Mayo, he'll be hard to ignore. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, like he was named in our team in the league and everything as well. He's he looks a fantastic prospect. Like Mayo's best performer in the All Ireland final last year, and yeah, what a player. So yeah, I think Mayo, given where we predicted them to kind of finish up. We've talked about Tommy Conroy kind of as the as a young player kind of getting the headlights. Maybe Ushi Mullins kind of uh, not getting as much attention kind of, which is kind of strange considering that he won it last year. But yeah, he's not a great shout. So uh, yeah, there's plenty kind of options coming through and uh, exciting to see a championship ahead with so many young fellas kind of uh, putting their hands up. I think if I had to put money down on who I think is going to win young football of the year, I think the man who looks in the best form right now is Ushi Mullins, I think. It's hard to ignore him. Yeah, I think that's hard. It's hard to argue against that as well. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, he 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 was a, he was a runaway winner la- winner with it last year, and uh, yeah, if he maintains the level of form he had last year, you'd be brave to bet against anyone else. Yeah. Okay, so moving on from that award, now we're going to move on to the championship top score. And, of course, there's a lot of key players, you know, but each team has their score. The first name I want to throw in as potential championship top scorer is David Clifford for Kerry. Everything seems to go through this guy. You know, whenever they get a penalty, David Clifford takes it. You know, he takes a lot of their frees, you know, on the left boot. I think he could be a huge scorer for Kerry because whenever Kerry win now, David Clifford pops up with a big tally. And, yeah, they're really making him the heartbeat of their team. And I think if Kerry win, David Clifford will score an awful lot this year. Yeah, I think I think it's an interesting one with that because Kerry kind of have kind of split their scores between him and Sean O'Shea. Like Clifford takes the freeze out on the right, O'Shea takes them out on the left. So the two of them will be uh, they kind of take some scores off each other as well. Sean O'Shea has kind of traditionally kind of been racking up some huge scores. So yeah, I think there's a good chance that either of them could be the, the top scorer for Kerry. 
and then ultimately in the entire championship because like as we're going to get to we're looking at Dublin here so far like they're expected to go very far into the championship but Cora Costello has been playing an awful lot of kind of game of the league games there's been no sign being rock yet so we'd expect Costello to be playing the, the the Leinster games but I'd fully imagine that Dean Rock will be back in when we get to the later All-Ireland stage. So it'll be very hard to bet on a Dublin player to be top scorer this year. Yeah, definitely. I think as good as O'Callaghan is, he doesn't really rack up the same tallies that a Dean Rock would. But to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Cormac Costello was a bit of a dark horse to win the top scorer because whenever Costello gets a run of games for Dublin, he usually racks up big tallies. And yeah, I think he could be an outside shot for it. But right now, if I had to put money down, I would pick David Clifford to be top scorer. Yeah, I think it's an interesting one because if you look at our other teams that we have back kind of for semi-finals, there's question marks over Michael Murphy's fitness. Like, will he be taking some of the frees? Like, Mac Brearty will be on a fair few frees for the, for the first couple of games, but then Murphy will be splitting them a bit as well. And then if you look kind of Mayo, we don't even know who's taking the frees now that uh, Kenny O'Connor's gone. So Dave a real hole of free taking kind of after having one of the most reliable in the entire country. So it's uh, there's no kind of obvious candidate uh, standing out just yet. I'm actually probably going to go against the grain a little bit, and I'm going to say Sean O'Shea is going to be top scorer this year. Yeah, Sean O'Shea is definitely a good show because he seems to just tap over about six or seven frees per game. And, yeah, I think that's a very good show. And um, so, yeah, I think... That's our championship preview done for 2021. I can't wait to listen back now and see how many things we got wrong. But, um, (laughs) yeah, no, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll catch you in the next one and take care.